Hey guys, first off, Merry Christmas to everybody and Happy New Year's. Hope everyone's had a really good Christmas. Hope you got what you wanted. Hope everything was cool. Um, got what I wanted. So we're gonna make a review about this. I'm gonna be saying how it is on PC and let's get straight into it. All right guys, so when it comes to the PS5 controller on PC, number one, so I can get this out the way for people that like to use it on PC like I am, uh, you download an app called DS4 Windows. I'm gonna link it below and that's how you connect everything. And when it comes to how the app runs and its latency and everything, it runs really, really good. Like for me, everything runs smooth. And uh, I'll put some little games up uh, right here on the screen. Uh, you're gonna see me playing Borderlands, pretty flawless, no latency. I'm gonna see me playing uh, Warzone, no latency. So I'm gonna come to PC, you wanna download DS4 Windows, and that's gonna be the way that you play the games. DS4 Windows is the way to go. Um, you can use like Steam and everything, like the way, I know there's other ways to do it, but I'm gonna link DS4 Windows below. It works with Battle.net, it works with Epic Games, and it works with Steam, all confirmed. And it just makes your controller able to run on a PC. And like I said, I'll link that below for anyone that wants to run the PS5 controller on PC like me. But when it comes to the actual controller, I wanna discuss the weight of it. So when it comes to the weight of the PS5 controller, it feels pretty heavy in terms of the PS4 controller. The PS4 controller is very light and uh, it was just very like easy to, you know, it was very easy to move around with the controller and play with the controller in your hand. Like, like me, for example, I played Claw on the controller and it was very easy for me to claw on the PlayStation 4 because it was just so light and it wasn't really heavy in my hand. And when it comes to the PS5, it's a little more bulky than the PS4 controller. And that's a problem when it comes to Claw, but I've noticed that Claw is really, it doesn't, it's not bad on the PS5 controller. It actually feels pretty good to me. Um, my fingers are pretty spaced apart, but other than that, um, the PS5 controller's weight, it feels pretty good. It feels very premium, like for you spending $75 on the controller. Um, it's very premium. Like it better be premium for $75, you know? And it feels really good in the hand. And like I said, the weight makes it, it gives it that feel that you just spent $75 on the control. Again, what I want to talk about is the actual buttons and the triggers. So the buttons, they still feel a little smushy, like the PlayStation 4 controller, which isn't a bad thing, which isn't a good thing. But uh, all in all, the PlayStation can, buttons feel pretty cool. They're a normal feel for me. Uh, the analogs. I love the analogs. The dead zones, you can make them really, really low and there's no drift. Uh, that goes with any new controller, but like the PS5 just feels different and it's just an amazing feel. And uh, the analogs, um, they kind of hurt a little bit when you're like running like in a game and you know you have to double run and stuff and having your uh, finger thumb at the bottom of the uh, analog, it feels pretty, it like makes your finger hurt. But other than that, really really good analogs i love them you don't lose grip at all aiming is pretty great in fps games love the analogs to death they're amazing when it comes to the triggers the creme du when it comes to the triggers uh i play with l1 r1 in shooting games which i play mostly and these bumpers feel amazing they are so much better than the ps4 ones because like i said i play claw so i use l and r1 to like aim and shoot and it feels so much better than the PS4. I'm gonna say that one more time. The bumpers on the PlayStation 5 controller are so much better. And I know that's not like the main draw when it comes to triggers and bumpers, it's the triggers, but I literally need to, the bumpers are amazing guys, I'm telling you. When it comes to the triggers, like I said, I play on a PS, uh, PC, my fault. 
so the triggers aren't really that important to me because I don't get that uh, trigger, the adaptive triggers. But there is a way you can set it up and try it out. And adaptive figures triggers feel really cool. Uh, you know, there's a gimmick, but they're, they're really cool. And I don't really see myself using them much unless I'm playing a story-driven game. But when it comes to adaptive triggers, from what I can tell on a PC and what I like, the setting I changed for it, it feels really good and they're really... It's really cool, like this controller is amazing. When it comes to the main 100% draw of the PS5 controller, it would be the haptic feedback. Like I said, again, I'm playing on a PC, so I can't really get the feeling of haptic feedback, but I could feel the vibrations from different games I'm playing. And that haptic feedback, you can tell that there's no uh, motors in the controller that's jiggling. You can tell that it's something different. And like when I'm reloading a gun, or I'm like running past something in a game that has like normal vibrations, I can feel in my controller that it's something different and it's something that feels really, really cool and something I would love to get into more. So hopefully I can get a PS5 and try that out because haptic feedback, I mean, it feels, yeah. Haptic feedback feels really, really, really good in terms of me playing it on a PC. When it comes to the touchpad on the PS5 controller, it's pretty standard it um it's pretty it feels just like the ps4 one um i like that they added back the touchpad it was a really cool feature and i find myself using it as a mouse for my pc a lot and i think that's i love that feature because i don't have to reach grab my mouse if i want to stay on a controller i have to do like a mouse cursor thing that i just feel like doing in a game then i can go ahead and do that when it comes to the mic that's built into the PS5 controller, it's... Okay, so on a PC, you can only hear the right side of like, on the ear, earphones, you only hear the right side of the mic, which isn't good. Uh, I'm pretty sure when the drivers come out for the PC, for the PS5, it'll be fixed, but in terms of the mic quality, the mic actually sounds really damn good. It's a great sounding mic, but the only thing is obviously, you can hear the buttons all throughout the mic, which isn't the best thing and isn't the worst thing for someone that just wants to chill back, sit back, talk to their friends and play on the game. If their friends don't mind it, it really isn't that bad. If your friends don't mind you smashing your keyboard on and on and on, then and they can hear it through the mic, then I guess they wouldn't mind buttons in their ear as well but like i was saying the mic is pretty great it's okay for what it is it could be better but the fact that they put a mic on the controller is enough for me to say yeah that's amazing and my favorite thing about the ps5 controller would have to be the usb-c port i've been waiting for them to change the port because my god the ps4 charger port always came out like i love that every all new tech is upgrading usb-c just faster connection faster charging just way better in terms of staying in it waiting for apple to change the iphones over to usb-c maybe we'll see it someday maybe we won't <laughs> but usb-c is such a big upgrade when it comes to these controllers because uh like i said i play on a pc so i have to connect my usb-c to my controller and I believe it was a micro, yeah, micro, mini, micro, micro USB. I believe it's micro, don't quote me though. It might be mini, it might be mini. Uh, but when I used the older one, uh, it would just pop out. I was just be in the middle of a fight and boom, it's straight out my controller telling me to reconnect. And it was just really, really, really annoying. So when it comes to charger ports, that's my number one. It have to be the USB-C port. I love the USB-C, like I said, very inexpensive. You come with anything, Nintendo Switch, MacBooks, USB-C is the way to go, it's the future, and it's just amazing. Now when it comes to the design of the PS5 controller, I really, really think it's pretty futuristic and cool. Uh, the white and black is pretty cool. Uh, it's kind of weird, because when it goes into people's setups, it's gonna be kind of weird. It was already in people's setups, but in the the PS5 itself and the controller, it really doesn't fit people's aesthetics. Uh, I know a lot of people, there's actually a lot of people that went with the Xbox because they wanted to fit in their aesthetic and the PS5 was too much of an attention jar. But then there's people that like 
attention drawing. So uh, that's when it comes to the PS5, the colors and everything. Hopefully we see something different when they come out with different color controllers. Maybe we can see some all uh, primary color controllers, so white and black. We can see like a uh, matte red, all red, all that. So uh, hopefully we see that. When it comes to the PS5 controller box, it's pretty standard. Uh, front PS5 controller side compatible with the PS5. That's a lie. I'm playing it on my PC. <laughs> uh, other side, just telling you the contents. I believe it's, yeah, it's just a um, code. And then right here would be just a bag hiding your senses. You know what they do to draw on people. Makes the box look pretty. And uh, yeah, that's what was on the PS5 box. Controller box. And guys, if you made it this far in the video, can you guys like and subscribe? That would be so, so great. And comment below and tell me what I can do better in the videos. And tell me what you want to see next. And uh, tell me what games you guys are playing on your PC or PS5 or even your Xbox. Love you guys. See you in the next one. Peace.